Hey guys, in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how I made a chair come alive using Blender. We'll go step by step starting with the 3D model, then moving to rigging and animation, and finally finishing with compositing into a real shot. So let's dive right into it. This is the original shot where I then added the 3D chair. In Blender I started off with this chair model that I modified to exactly match the rest of the chairs in the room. First step is creating a rig for the chair. Create an armature, rotate, scale and move it to the position of the seat. Hit E to extrude and add another bone to the right. Then I added two more bones for the leg. To make this cleaner we can display the armature as B bones and adjust the scale with Ctrl Alt S. I added one more bone to the bottom of the leg and then created bones for the leg in the back. Next I added two more bones for the back of the chair. It is also important to properly name the individual bones. All of these bones are on the left side of the chair so I added L at the end of the name. This way we'll be able to automatically create bones for the right side of the chair. Additionally, I duplicated the bone on the ground, changed the scale and cleared the parent. This bone will function as a control bone for the front leg. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Now we can select all of the bones on the left side of the chair, right click and choose Symmetrize. Let's create an IK rig for the leg so that we can control it with just one bone. Select the bone on the ground, go to Bone Constraints and add Bone Constraint. Choose Inverse Kinematics. Select the armature as target and choose the control bone. Increase the chain length and disable Use Tail. And now we can see that we can control the whole leg with this bone. Then I did the same for the other legs. I also added one more control bone in the front of the seat and added the bone constraint to the bone in the middle. Next in edit mode I parented the bones in the back of the seat to the backbone of the chair and the backbone to the seat bone. Now we have something like this. Before we continue I would like to quickly mention Envato Elements. Envato Elements is a tool every filmmaker will appreciate. You can find there thousands of creative assets and templates for any kind of project you're working on. They offer great stock footage including green screen clips like fog, fire, lightning and literally anything you'll need. Apart from that this library also includes awesome After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, VFX assets, intros, transitions, motion graphics, as well as sound effects and music. It allows you to download unlimited amount of all these assets just for a single price and you can cancel it anytime. Envato Elements is a huge time saver and helps you create videos faster. Make sure to check it out, there is a link in the description down below. Now let's burn the rig to the chair. Before that make sure to apply all transforms to avoid any further problems. Now first select the object, then the armature, hit Ctrl P and choose Armature Deform with Automatic Weights. We can already see something happening, but we need to adjust the weight painting for each bone. You can set to view the bones in front. Select the armature then the object and hold Ctrl Tab to get into the weight paint mode. 
In this panel on the side you can see the individual bones. You're basically defining which parts of the mesh should be affected by each bone. On the top you have the brush settings. I usually turn off the front faces only option. Red color means the most influence and the blue parts won't be influenced by that bone. While you are painting you can also hold Alt and that will allow you to create this gradient. You can Ctrl click or I think it's Alt click in Blender 4.0 to select each bone. And this is what we have now. Then just go one by one and adjust the weight of each bone. For the final render you can also add more subdivisions with the subdivision modifier, but I won't use it in the viewer for now because it would slow down the performance. Once I had this rig set up, it was time for animation. Now I'm not an animator, but I did my best to create a movement. Click I to insert the first keyframe, and then you can turn on the auto keyframing, which will create a keyframe every time a change is made. You can tweak the animation in the graph editor. For the jump I parented the object to an empty, which I can simply animate at the moment of the jump. Great thing about having a rig like this with eye case is that you can just grab one control bone and create a few keyframes for the key poses. Then you can further refine it. Always look for some references that you can use as a guide for your animation. For example a run or walk cycle for the legs. You can also look for some videos of a cat or dog running. I'm using another empty to move the whole chair when it starts to run. Once I was happy with the animation I imported my background footage. First I had to 3D track the camera. I used Synthize for this, but you can also do this inside of Blender. I'll link some tutorials I did for camera tracking in Blender down in the description below so you can check it out. Now that we have the camera we need to match the lighting. For this I created an HDRI of the room from a couple of photos of this mirror ball at different exposures. Another option is to find an HDRI that would match the lighting of your scene on sites like Polyhaven. Next I imported the HDRI into my scene and added some additional lights. I set the ground plane as a shadow catcher. However the ground plane still has the default color which creates a bounce light that doesn't match the floor. So I subdivided it and projected the background texture onto it by hitting U in edit mode, project from view. Also pay attention to the intensity, direction and softness of the shadows so that they match the rest of the scene. Finally I tweak the materials and render settings and render the whole scene. In compositing I masked out the objects that should be in front of the CG chair and placed them above the other layers. And we are done. I hope you found this useful and if you did please like and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.